Do you want to hear about the experience of a Lithuanian person living in Ireland? If you said yes, then great, watch this video. And if you said no, maybe watch it for a few minutes and then if you get bored, you can turn it off. Sound good? Hey, my name is Pavel and today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a different type of video that I usually do on this channel. I'm usually kind of talk about film and just that sort of stuff, but I'm going to be doing kind of like a story time video that's kind of unscripted. I have some notes on my laptop, but mostly just going to kind of be stories about myself, about growing up in Ireland because if you can't tell by my accent, I'm not Irish. There might be a little hints of like an Irish accent in my voice, but I'm actually, well, I was born in Lithuania, but now my nationality is Irish. So I guess I am technically Irish now, but I am, I was born in Lithuania and I kind of want to talk about it. Realistically, I'm probably going to forget a lot of stuff because um, I don't have a lot written out and I kind of want to just do it on top of my head. So I'm gonna make this into like a two part video type of thing. So this is gonna be like a story time where I talk about my experience of growing up in Ireland, childhood in Lithuania and that sort of stuff. And then in my second part, I'll do kind of like a Q and A type of thing where hopefully I'll answer questions. If you're interested, if you're not interested, that's fair enough. So please stick around and let's uh, talk about being Lithuanian slash Irish. This video is gonna be divided into five mini parts. So it's going to be pre-Ireland, primary school, secondary school, university, and now. So initially I was born in Lithuania. I was born on the 10th of October, 1998 at 10 p.m. in the 10th room. So mom always tells me like 10 is my lucky number. I was born in Vilnius, which is the capital of Lithuania. Uh, quite shortly after my mom was born, she went over to Norway to work because Lithuania just didn't have a lot of work. So I kind of lived with my granny and I just loved eating pasta, sausages, and watching uh, buses with her. That was kind of my favorite pastime. And I lived in Lithuania until I was like, I always get this wrong. I tell everybody something different. So I'm going to say till I was five, maybe six. I'm not sure. So then one day my mom came back from Norway after working and she was like, hey, what do you think of the idea of moving to Ireland? Because she hadn't told me, but she went to Ireland for a few months after Norway to seek jobs and trying to try find kind of like a place for me and her to live. And also this this entire video is going to be basically focused on just me and my mum because it's always just been me and her. I don't know my dad or anything like that, but I'll probably touch on that a little bit later on. So she came back and she was like, do you want to move to Ireland? And I had no clue what was happening and I loved being with my granny. So I just cried a lot and but obviously I had to go and we went. And yeah, that's kind of where my Irish side of the story started. So I, I think I was six, but coming into Ireland, I knew no English. I just knew fluent Russian. The reason I knew Russian, although I'm from Lithuania, was in Ireland, a lot of people speak English. Irish is considered kind of like a secondary language. And in Lithuania, it's kind of the same. Russian is spoken there a lot. And now um, English is very popular there too. Um, Lithuanian just wasn't in my family. We just didn't speak it that much. So I knew Russian very badly because I was a kid. And I came over to Ireland and I started learning English and all that sort of stuff. So I moved to Ireland and the town I moved to is called Ruski, which is really confusing for me because Ruski in Russian means Russian, if that kind of makes sense. So I went to it, like it really confused me as a kid because I was like, why am I going to a town named Russian? It didn't make, make any sense. But anyway, I started primary school. I knew, knew, I knew no English. I was very quiet and which is really weird because I speak so much now and apparently I just didn't talk. The first story I remember from being in Ireland was going outside with a spray can because graffiti is really pop popular in Vilnius. And I remember going to a wall and writing fuck, but I did not know how to spell fuck. So I went over to the wall with a little uh, cylinder, like a graffiti cylinder, whatever they're called, like spray paint. And I wrote fuck, but I spelled it F-U-K. And a few people in the town saw it and <laughs> I'll never live that memory down because that is so fucking embarrassing. I wrote F-U-K. That, that, that's my first English word I think I probably wrote. Then I kind of kept in contact with my family in Lithuania by calling uh, my granny on the phone and people over there. And it was very weird for me because I didn't really know what was happening half the time. But when I came over to Ireland, uh, my granny didn't really let me in Lithuania eat like snacks. Didn't She didn't really let me eat, like drink Coke, eat crisps. So when I came over to Ireland, my mom was like, yeah, eat whatever you want. Um, I went crazy. I put on so much weight. Doesn't matter, but I put on so much weight from just drinking like coke continuously and eating so much crisps. So I was living my best life, not speaking to anyone, writing FUK in the wall, and yeah, just watching Dora. I think I loved watching Dora the Explorer. Explorer, I don't know, in the mornings. Also, another story I remember from primary school is that I had to read out loud, and there was a word called you know the the I had to read a word called uh, blubber, and I said blueber. And um, everybody laughed at me 
and I am genuinely terrified of reading it out loud in front of a crowd or in front of anybody now. Even when I read notes off this laptop, I swear I get a little bit scared simply because I said bloober instead of blubber and everybody laughed at me. I also made my first friend in Ireland uh, probably like a few weeks in and his, I won't call, I'll just say him he in case he, he watches this and doesn't want his name here. And me and him uh, just, just played around, played football and he kind of introduced me to like more of an Irish lifestyle. So that's when I was more familiar with uh, going to church and stuff like that. Like I, I'm not a religious person. I've, I think I went to church in Ireland like one or two times but he kind of introduced me into the kind of like routine of going to church on Sundays and stuff like that. And like GAA, like Gaelic football, which really confused me and it still confuses a lot of my family in Lithuania. They're like, why is there hands and feet used in a football game? It doesn't make sense. Why is there a bar you have to kick over and under? Didn't really make sense to me as a kid, but obviously makes sense to me now because I'm 23 and I've been living here for such a long time. But yeah, I kind of spent my primary school years just being quiet and slowly learning English. And this is where I was introduced to my main source of being able to learn English, which is so embarrassing to say, and that is listening to Eminem. Um, I loved Eminem and I remember <laughs> I was at my friend's house and I uh, heard Shake That for the first time. I was like eight, probably nine. And I was like, whoa, this is so good. And I kept listening to it on YouTube. I think YouTube came out a few years after, or this is when I kind of discovered YouTube was a little bit after. Eminem really helped me learn English and it's extremely embarrassing. It's so embarrassing because I really don't like Eminem now. Uh, the, the story just kind of makes me uh, cringe so much. My neighbor, my friend, my neighbor was a bad fucker because he continuously did stupid shit like throw rocks at like abandoned houses, windows. And I remember he put a cat into a bin and I remember, I remember being so confused. I was like, what in the fuck is happening? He's putting cats into bins. He's throwing rocks at windows. And I was like, this is chaos. Believe it or not, when I got to secondary school, I um, was not really friends with him that much. I made a whole new group of friends who I'm still really close with, so that's great. So whenever I start going to secondary school, which is about like 10 minutes from my house, I um, was a bad fuck. Throughout the years in secondary school, I just kind of became more of a brat and I kind of became just not a really nice person. So I kind of spent the first year of my secondary school causing fuck, just being a really annoying student, um, disrupting classes and just shouting. I, I kind of changed once I got to second year. Sorry, I don't know if you, if you don't know how school works in Ireland's primary school, which is junior infants, senior infants, and first to sixth class. Then you go to secondary school and it's first to sixth year. And there's an optional fourth year, but I'll explain that in a minute. So when I was in first year, I developed a huge phase I developed a huge phase with an emo band called Black Veil Brides, and this is where my big, big emo phase began. I'll try and insert some photos here because I definitely know I have any, and it's extremely embarrassing. So um, enjoy these horrible, horrible photos of myself. So I kind of spent the first year listening to like emo bands like uh, Sleeping With Sirens, Pierce the Veil, Black Veil Brides, and I was so into them. I was like, this is so good. Um, I really wanted to copy like Andy Biersack's tattoos, who's the lead singer of Black Veil Brides. And um, that was a hectic time. Second year came around and I lost loads of weight. I cut off all my emo hair. I don't really know what happened. I think I started watching Joey Graceffa and I was like, yeah, this is uh, who I want to be. I had really short hair. I'll try to get a photo again. And um, yeah, I kind of just focused on studying. And this is when I slowly developed my kind of like my attraction to learning because I really love learning now. And I think this is kind of like where it stemmed from. Uh, throughout this time, I was still kind of like learning English. By the time I was in first year, I was definitely a lot better. Like I could fluently speak to people, but you could still tell by my accent that I am, um, that I still was obviously not Irish. Um, and a lot of people kept pointing that out and I still get comments like whenever I bought my car now, uh, someone saw my second name and they're like, hey, that doesn't look like an Irish name. You know, people still point it out and I'm not trying to make this video uh, about like a sad type of video, but it's still, um, you know, it's still quite obvious to an extent. And I remember my friend being very shocked in secondary school when I got into honors level English and he didn't, he was like, but you're foreign. How did you get into honors level English? And I felt so good when I finished university with an English degree, I was like, ha. Ah. I can do it. <laughs> it just kind of made me feel a little bit better about myself that I'm actually like decent at English now. And I remember also in first year wanting snake bites, uh, piercings, and I'm so glad I didn't get those. And I remember my mom being like, you're reading way too many email magazines. I'm not letting you get snake bites. And I'm so glad she didn't. I also got my first uh, girlfriend, well, my first proper girlfriend in secondary school. Obviously I'm not with them anymore. I, all, all that is to the side. I've, I'm with somebody else now who I really love. And um, yeah, this is where I developed my, since I loved my emo music, I loved uh, going to concerts, but mum, going to Dublin from Roscommon is quite a distance. Like you would have to get the bus and take like three hours. 
And it was just a bit dodgy, so I used to continuously lie to my mom, be like, hey, I'm going on the school trip, when realistically I'd leave to like queue for 21 pilots for 13 hours at 8 a.m. and come back and be like, yeah, our school trip ended really late. And I don't know how she believed me, but um, I'm quite lucky that my mom believed me so much. And uh, yeah, I was just a bad fucker. This is where I met my other friends, David, Carl, Julian, Ethan. Um, there's so many people. And I, this is where I kind of start hanging out with them. Every week kind of stayed at David's house and we would just watch movies. And I think this is where kind of like my fascination with movies happened. We would stay up all night watching like three movies, maybe two movies. And yeah, from then on, I really started to like film, but I also liked movies when I was a lot younger. I remember watching Lord of the Rings, uh, a dub version with my mom in Russian. And I really, really loved it. Once I came to Leaving Cert, which is kind of like the last exam of secondary school, I took studying so seriously and I, I made myself sick many times. I I kind of, this is kind of where I started doing YouTube properly. I remember making vlogs of me literally losing my mind. I might insert a tiny, tiny little clip of it now. Maybe I won't, I don't know. You know, all that sort of stuff. And I really hope in like college, I can keep up this sort of work, I suppose, but not obviously to this extent because it's extremely mentally draining for the amount I'm doing, but um, obviously not that much, like a fifth of that, but still work and don't really stop it and then hopefully kind of refine myself, I suppose, in college and be more happy with myself. That's a really big goal of mine, but yeah. But I remember me kind of losing my mind over the leaving cert and I did fairly well. I remember thinking about university. I was like, yeah, I want to be a translator. And I still think I do, but I'm not too sure what I want to do in my life, 100%. But my thought was I already know Russian fluently and I fell in love with English because my English teacher, I think that's kind of like the origin story for everybody loving English. They fall in love with their English teacher and everything they teach. I didn't fall in love with my English teacher. I fell in love with the, the substance of uh, everything that was being taught throughout the lesson, <laughs> just in case. Um, and I remember really loving English and I was like, you know what, I really want to do English and I really loved photography at the time and like just visual, just visual media in general. And I was like, okay, let me do, it was either going to be uh, studying Russian with a film studies or business, I don't actually remember in Trinity, or study English with media studies in Maynooth, which is what I did. I remember I did anthropology for a week in English and I just did not like my lecture. So I kind of just dipped and I'm kind of glad I did because I, I kind of took an extra subject called critical skills, which I did fuck all in and I'm, I kind of regret it, but it also gave me a lot more time to just hang out with friends and do everything I kind of did in university. But I'll get back to that in one minute. Oh, I also forgot to mention, I went through a huge GEZ phase in secondary school. I went through so many phases. I trying to find myself, to have, trying to find out what I like is one of those things that just uh, made me feel really insecure because I was like, everybody has their thing. I don't have my thing. I need to find it. I don't have a set music taste. And I remember con continuously fighting within my head, being like, why can't I listen to two genres of music? I remember being, I actively remember having my like iPod with my Blackwell Bride sticker on it and being like, should I listen to rap and make that my personality or should I listen to emo music and make that my personality? Because I was like, there's no way I can listen to both things at the same time. So I had a huge uh, GZ phase. I had a phase of probably everything. All my YouTubers, like all my Dan and Phil, everything that Joey Graceffa, Marcus Butler went through it all. And also in secondary school, I continuously sla saved up all my lunch money for those concert tickets. I know I'm jumping back and forth, but I saved, my mom would give me like five euros a day for lunch. And I think I just used to save it all in my pocket and buy random like vinyl or DVDs or just go to the cinemas with that movie. Uh, with that with that money. I think actually hearing like the origin story of where I developed my interests in all this is uh, kind of justifies where I am right now. It kind of explains it all. So then I went to university in 2018 to Maynooth University and studied English and media and I loved it. There was just something every time I came out of an English class in secondary school, I just had this like feeling. It's so hard to explain but I had this like warm feeling of being like this feels so right and I, just, I was just like, right, I'm gonna go chase this. This is what I'm gonna do because it just feels so right. And I'm so glad I did because English changed everything. I developed such a love for books. I developed such a love for media, just for everything. And um, I felt like a sense of accomplishment whenever I did like really well in my essays. And I have like a physical binder of all my essays and being able to look back on that and be like, hey, I did all this. And I remember, I remember so well, okay. I remember getting my first English essay back from my, um, sorry, there was like a little fly thing. I, I remember getting my first English essay back about Pride and Prejudice 
in um, university and my English lecturer was like, oh, I can really tell you're foreign. Maybe you should uh, get some English help. And I was like, fuck you. And I used that as motivation to actually get really good at it. And I did really well in all my um, assignments from there on, especially in second and third year. I, I feel like I did really well. I'm not trying to be cocky, but I feel like I did quite well. And I remember being so angry because I was like, how, how, how do you have the balls to say that to a student? How? That's horrible. And um, I feel like I did my mum proud because if she, I didn't tell her the story, but I feel like if I did tell her that, she would have been so angry because she's gone through a lot of shit with people just kind of giving her slack for having bad English. People have been like, oh, that's the foreign lady. And it's just horrible. And I think actually being able to be like, hey, I got a really high grade in my overall university degree in English is just like a big fuck you to that. And I'm so glad, you know, made me really happy. If you don't know where Maynooth is, it's kind of close to Dublin. And I remember the entire point of me moving up to Dublin would be that I would go to a lot of uh, plays and concerts. But uh, COVID happened and I went to zero plays and I went to a good few concerts alone. I, I went to so many concerts alone, which is so dangerous. But I'll get back to that in a second. I went to zero plays. I was like, I want to really get into drama. Didn't get into drama, but I still really hope to. I've read a lot of plays. I've just not been to many plays, if you know what I mean. And another really big thing that happened to me when I was in university was that I had really bad fear of acceptance of my name, which sounds really weird, but I'll get to it now. Throughout primary and secondary school, mum um, told me my name was Paul. I knew my name was Pavel, but she was just like, just so people don't look at you weirdly and don't treat you a bit differently, I'm gonna say that your name's Paul and you can just go by Paul as a nickname. And Paul in Russian means um, floor. So I remember mum used to be like, if you're ever worried, just look at the floor and you'll remember your name. And I remember uh, it kind of slipping out uh, one or two times, probably like 10 times throughout secondary school of my name being Pavel. And uh, the teachers and students would all, often give me like a really weird look and be like, oh, that's such a weird name. And I just came to hate my name. I was like, I do not like Pavel. The word Pavel makes me feel sick. It makes me feel like I'm not Irish. And I'm so glad I got over that fear because, sorry, my eye is itchy. Uh, whenever I went to college, I was like, I'm gonna tell everyone my name's Pavel. And I'm so glad I did because I'm not crying, by the way, I just rubbed my eye because it's really itchy. Uh, whenever I went to college, I told everyone my name is Pavel because I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna make the most of it. It's such a unique name and I really, really love it now. And everybody, including my girlfriend, all my some of my friends, some of my friends are kind of like, because they've went through the phase of just knowing me as Paul. And then when I was like, my actual name is Pavel, they were like, wait, so do I call you Paul or Pavel? Um, but they kind of still call me Paul, but I've kind of understood that uh, I should have always just went by Pavel and learned to love it. And I really do love my name now. I think Paul is a lot more generic and I never really hear of many people in Ireland, many Irish people called Pavel. And I'm just really embracing it and I really love it. Anyway, back to college university stories. Throughout university, I just made a lot of friends, went to all my lectures, I joined dance society and I really love dancing, but I kind of quit after a while because I got lazy. I joined yoga society. I also uh, quit after a while because I got very lazy and I fell asleep made lessons many times. I tried to set up like a translation languagey type thing. Didn't work out. I probably got a bit too lazy because I'm, I suck at balance. I cannot do some essays and then just hang out with friends and do everything else. I have to give all my energy into just this one thing, which is awful. It's one of my big downfalls. I have to focus entirely on one essay if I want to be really good at it. And I feel like that's how I get on well in my essays is because I just dedicate entire days on studying and reading papers and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, I in second year, I lived in a house that we called the Virginity Villa. I don't question it. With uh, four of my friends and we loved it even though the house was awful. I'll try to get a video or a photo because that house sucked. My friend had a hole in his window, like at the bottom of his window, and he was sick every other week. Our bathroom had mold in it. My room was continuously cold. My other friend's room was continuously cold. The house was awful. And I'm so glad we got out of there, but I loved it so much because that's when I met my girlfriend, uh, who I really love. And that's when I got really close with all my friends. And you know, like everything just worked out. And I had to walk, I think it was like four kilometers each way to school, to university and yeah, not school. I think halfway into second year is when COVID happened. And obviously we all had to go home. And that kind of obviously uh, destroyed kind of my plans but it also brought me closer to uh, my girlfriend and stuff like that. And I did really well in all my papers because all I could do was just focus on English and focus on media and doing really well in my assignments and my readings and all that sort of stuff. And then in that time I was like, okay, I want to develop more hobbies and I started learning French. 
which was uh, which is quite fun. So I'm trying to learn French, I'm fluent in Russian, and I'm fluent in English, which is kind of cool. If I can be fluent in three languages in life, I think I'd be really happy. Also in second year of college, I learned how to drive, I got my license, and then I bought my car the year after. There was just so many great memories from that house. Like uh, there's this photo of my roommate, Megan, getting stuck in her bed frame because she was building a bed and built it around her and then basically couldn't get out. I'll try to get a photo. It's so funny, so good. Then during second and third year, I was basically online from a university and I was trying to figure out what in the world do I wanna do with my life. I was debating going back to doing another undergrad in translation in Russian this time, but I didn't. And I was going to uh, do a master's in English or media and hopefully go on to do a PhD, but that's something I kind of want to do further on in life. But I decided on doing a PGCE, which is the equivalent of a secondary teaching university masters in um, Ulster University. So I would be teaching in the UK, I think, but I got my place. Apparently the interviews are really hard. I've, I found them very, um, I quite enjoyed them. I had to read, uh, I, I had to read a script during my interview and act it out. And it was very weird, but the most unique interview I had. So I got the position. I, re I deferred it for a year. So I'll be starting there this September. And um, yeah, so far, I think that's what I want to do. I want to just teach in a secondary school because I'm very passionate about it. I was involved with a great place on campus in Maynooth called Access Office who helped uh, incoming students, students who had struggles, uh, socioeconomic struggles, uh, disabilities. And yeah, I'll put up a little bio on my screen now, kind of explaining it. And I just really loved working with students. I have my entire life. I was like prefect and I helped with uh, open nights during secondary school. So I really, really loved it. And I really wanna work with students and I really wanna have the impact that my English teacher had on me, for example, to other students. Uh, so far, I'm going to be hopefully a secondary school teacher um, after I finish my master's that starts in September and it's 10 months. And now currently in life, I'm starting a new job tomorrow in a school. I'm not a teacher, I'm a support learner. Um, I'm living with my girlfriend in our own apartment and it's just great and everything's working out very well, but that's um, that's kind of where uh, my life is. That's a very brief summary of everything that's happened so far in life. I've definitely forgot so much. That's what I'm kind of gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do a Q and A type of thing later on. But if you have any questions on anything that I've said in this, please please leave a comment, and I'd really like to talk to you about it. Or go on my Instagram at Pavel Spam and ask me anything. I'll gladly tell you about being Lithuanian, living in Ireland. Also, I forgot to mention, I now have an Irish passport. I got my nationality. I became officially Irish, I think about six or seven years ago. We went to a big co conference. My mum got her passport first and there was a big ceremony for her and I was so happy and it made me so proud of her that she left a country where there was no jobs and um, the economy was quite bad to starting her life from scratch basically having no home when she got here, having no job, to uh, being a full-on citizen, having her own home. Everything worked out and I was so proud of her. Then I got my passport a few months after that. So now I'm technically not Lithuanian, like legally, but I'm at heart still Lithuanian and Irish. So, and now I'm living in Northern Ireland. So there you go, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'll conclude by saying I miss my granny's cooking. I miss Lithuania and I will go uh, eventually. It's just, again, I get a little bit lazy and it's kind of hard to do everything, but it just sucks not being able to see my family physically. The only family here I have is my mum, but I see her as much as I can, so everything's great. But I love having my own place. I love being able to do this YouTube sort of, sort of stuff. And yeah, I think everything is working out very well. I think that's it for this video. I know I didn't get to watch any movies this video, but I still wanna ask you, what should I watch next? Thank you so much for watching my video on me speaking about my experience being a Lithuanian person in Ireland and kind of getting to know me a little bit better. That was kind of the point of this video is that you get to know me a little bit better. Um, you might be interested in this, but it's quite fun to talk about. I know that was a hectic video, so if you have any questions, please ask me in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.